If you've ever wanted to check out your SketchUp models on the go, you've got to check out the free SketchUp Viewer for mobile app. It's available on Android and iPhone. And in this video, what I'm going to do is go over all of the features of the app and review the premium augmented reality feature uh, that you get with SketchUp Shop or SketchUp Pro subscription. So hang in there, even if you've checked out this app before, I guarantee you're gonna learn something new in this video. So let's go ahead and dive in. Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com, author of SketchUp to Layout and co-author of SketchUp and Layout for Architecture. So the SketchUp Viewer for mobile app is a great way to view your SketchUp models on the go, whether you wanna just show a client um, an animation of your model or whether you're picking up supplies for a project and you didn't get a certain dimension and you need to just double check some measurements. Um, or even if you're in the workshop and you're building uh, you know, a woodworking project, you can actually set up your SketchUp model so you can just pull it right up on your phone and view dimensions and build your project using just the SketchUp viewer for mobile app. So let's go ahead and dive in and see exactly how this app works. All right, so when you first open the app, you're gonna need to sign in to your Trimble account, which you can set up for free. Um, this is the same account you're gonna use when you use SketchUp Free. And once you log in, in order to open a SketchUp model, you're gonna tap on this cloud icon here. So there's a number of different ways to access models in the app. So you have the 3D Warehouse, which all you need to do is create a search term. Um, so let's say we were looking for a chair. And it'll search the entire 3D warehouse. And then you can just tap on one of these models and tap on this download icon here. And that'll download the model right to your phone where you can then view it in uh, the app itself. Some other options that you have are uh, the Trimble Connect, which is the same place all of your models are gonna be saved when you're using SketchUp Free or SketchUp Shop. So all the models that you've created online, you're going to have access to them uh, right inside uh, the SketchUp Viewer app. You can also use Dropbox, and if you have files that you've um, transferred directly to the device, you can search your device for those. So this model right here is kind of the sample file that comes with the app, uh, the Dance Center um, model. And in order to navigate, it's you're basically just using either a single finger to orbit around, or you can use two fingers to pan, and then to zoom, you're just gonna pinch in or out to zoom around. Now, as you can see, this is actually, like it performs really well. It's, it's very snappy. Um, We'll talk about kind of the display properties here. You're not going to have the same exact um, visual display uh, options that you do in the desktop version or even the, the SketchUp for web versions um, that we have. But there's really a lot you can do with the view right in this, uh, right in this app. So let's say we wanted to look at a, uh, a top-down orthographic view of the model. So the first thing we would do is um, on, the, on the left hand side, you can see all of the different menus that you have here. And if you tap on the scenes button, you can see there's a number of preset scenes. So uh, we'll go to the top view. And so that oriented the camera to a top view. And then in order to get an orthographic mode, we'll tap on the camera menu and tap orthographic. Now note here, when you're in perspective mode, you can actually also change the field of view as well. But uh, we're gonna go to orthographic, and then the next thing we might wanna do is change uh, the visible layers. So we have full control over the visibility of all the layers in the model. So if we turn off the roof, then we can see everything underneath. And so then you can pinch and zoom and move around, um, one thing to note though, if you are trying to do an orthographic view like this, it's kind of tricky if you're still in orbit mode because, you know, inevitably you might accidentally, you know, 
hit the screen with one finger instead of two, because two fingers will pan, one finger will orbit. So the best thing to do, if I go back to um, top view, um, this menu right here allows you to change your different navigation modes. So because you're using fingers and not a mouse like on the desktop in uh, web versions of SketchUp, this is really handy because if you turn it to pan mode, now you can just use a single finger to move the view around and you don't have to worry about the screen um, orbiting out of that top view. And you can, you know, of course, zoom in and out uh, by pinching like that. Now, of course, you can save a lot of time um, in setting this type of stuff up if you do it in SketchUp ahead of time and save it as a scene. And of course, if you go to the scenes uh, menu, you will have access to all of the scenes that you've created in SketchUp. So for instance, if we look at um, cross-section elevation, that's going to you know change the style, activate section cuts, uh, turn the camera to perspective mode, um, I'm sorry, turn the camera to orthographic mode, you know, whatever setup in the scene uh, will be recalled right here. So that's really handy um, knowing that all of your scenes will get brought into the SketchUp viewer app. And if you wanted to say show a client, you know, a um, animation of the model, you can actually just hit play here and it'll go ahead and cycle through all of the different scenes um, and you can actually go into the settings and change the um, the timing of that as well. And if you just tap on the screen, that'll close the uh, the menu without stopping the, the animation. It'll just keep going there. And then to stop the animation, you just need to go back in and hit pause to stop it. I'm pretty sure there's a way to change the timing of that animation. I could be wrong though. I might be thinking of something else. But um, of course you can always do that in SketchUp itself on the desktop or um, on the web. All right, so let's look at another model and talk about the uh, some of the various tools that are at your disposal. Now, because this is a viewer app, you're not gonna get any modeling tools. It's You're not gonna be able to create uh, entities or manipulate or move them. But there are a few tools that you can use that um, can give you information about the model. So the first thing is the, let's talk about the select tool. So the select tool is gonna allow you to select any entity in the model. So groups, components, edges, faces, things like that. And you'll see the entity info window up here, it's gonna tell you, you know, what you have selected, what layer it's on, um, its name, and any measurement information uh, that goes along with it. Now, just like in regular SketchUp, you can double click to open groups and components. Now, one thing I noticed about this, um, you, you notice how the, the rest of the model um, what became hidden as soon as I opened this group. That's a setting in SketchUp called hide rest of model. And I haven't been able to actually find that setting in this app. So I think it just inherits whatever, um, whatever you had that setting set as in the program itself or in the scene itself, if you're going through different scenes. Um, but I don't see a way to actually change that setting in the app itself. And I'd, I'd love to see that because um, I can definitely see instances where you would want this to happen um, and other instances where you would want the rest of the model to, to be visible. So that's just kind of a, a side note there. Maybe I'm wrong, it might be in here somewhere, but I haven't been able to find it. I've, been, I've spent several hours kind of reviewing this app for this video and, and I haven't been able to find that setting. But this is really handy, like let's say you needed to get the, um, the square footage of all of the siding here, and we can see a single face gives us an area of 107 square feet. But if I long press on the select tool, it gives you these additional options for adding and removing from a selection. So if we select the add to selection, I can add these additional faces to the selection. That way we get a total area um, calculation of 375 square feet. So let me go back to the uh, regular select tool. And 
you know, another thing you could do if we wanted to know how many balusters we had here, I could just open up one of these uh, groups and select one of those components and it'll tell me how many balusters are in the entire model because this is a component and I know that's repeated all throughout. I can just grab that one number to know the total uh, number of balusters that I need for, uh, for this project. All right, now if you need to measure between two points, you can use the tape measure tool right here. And with this, you just pick two points. So you just tap on the first point, tap on the second point, and there you go. It gives you your dimension. Now this works pretty good. I, I was actually impressed by how accurate I was able to pick points that you know I was trying to pick. You know, it's kind of tough with a finger to be, you know, super accurate, but it actually works really well. I was really uh, impressed with that. And if you ever want to change the units, you can obviously uh, do that right here. That'll change the units not only for the tape measure tool, but also if you have any actual dimensions in the model itself, it'll change the units for that as well. And the last tool you have here is the move section plane tool. Now let me open the dance um, center model again and we're going to go to a preset scene so you do have to do a little bit of setup to use the feature you need to have a scene in the model that has a section cut active already um, because you can't you know create section cuts in this viewer app it has to be something that's already existing and um, something that's already active but then if you go to so you can see we've got this this model and there's a uh, section cut going through the model. Now the cool thing is if you go to the move section plane tool you can just click and drag on one on you know anywhere the section plane is going through the model and you can move it to a different location. So that's really handy when you're you know looking at the model and you want to get a different um, a different cut you can just go ahead and click and move it. And just keep in mind, you don't actually have to have, um, so in the view menu here, you can toggle whether you want section cuts on or off, and you can also toggle whether section planes are on or off. You can see this model has two section planes, but you don't actually have to have section planes active in order to use the move um, section plane tool. So you can just click on the actual section itself and move it. Now, whenever you have any one of these tools active, um, you do have the ability to orbit, but sometimes you can unintentionally, you know, activate the tool when you're trying to orbit and stuff like that. So just keep in mind, whenever you're done using one of these tools um, and you want to just go back to regular navigation, all you have to do is tap the um, navigation toolbar uh, menu button here and then just tap on orbit once more and then that will bring you back to the default navigation mode and Again, you can always tap on the screen to hide that menu altogether as well All right, and next we have the view menu and this is basically going to be all of your different style settings So you're not going to have everything um, specifically sketchy edge styles are not compatible with the viewer app on mobile um, and I don't know if it's maybe just my phone it might be a unique bug but anytime I tried to open a model that had sketchy edges in it the app would completely lock up I would get a black screen and uh, I wouldn't be able to use the app so if you're experiencing something like that maybe it's because you're trying to open a sketchy uh, edge model I'm not sure uh, again I'm not sure if that's like just isolated to me or not but anyways, you do have the ability to turn on shadows. Um, this is kind of a, a large model. This might lock up here. Yeah, let me go back to a smaller model. Okay. So let me try that again. We'll turn on shadows. We can see we have shadows here. I'm actually, keep in mind, I'm streaming the view of my phone to my computer so I can record a better quality you know, screen. So um, I'm kind of eating up some of my processing power on the phone. Um, so just keep that in mind as well when I'm, you know, trying to show big models and it's it's slowing down a little bit. 
Um, so yeah, shadows, hidden geometry, section planes we already talked about, uh, a number of different edge styles. These are pretty much all of the edge styles that you have in uh, SketchUp and the different face styles as well. Enable transparency is kind of neat. I, I, we don't have that feature in uh, the SketchUp for desktop or I, I don't think it's on SketchUp for web either, but you can turn transparency on or off as well. Now, obviously these settings are going to change automatically for you if you're activating a scene that has a certain style active. So that's just something to keep in mind, but you can always come over here and override those settings. All right, so the next feature is the augmented reality feature. This is a premium feature, but before I jump into that, I just wanna note one last thing in the navigation toolbar is the position camera tool. So what you do is you just tap somewhere in your model and that's gonna jump down into a you know perspective as if you're like standing in the model. And then you can tap to position camera. So it's automatically gonna go to, to uh, look around uh, position camera. That's not what I meant, look around mode. Um, so basically, you know, it's like you're standing there and you're just kind of looking around the model. All right, so that's basically all the free features in the SketchUp app. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the augmented reality feature. Now this feature uses um, the an AR, I forget what it's called, AR Core um, toolkit that's built into the phone itself. So it's kind of using uh, that platform to create this augmented reality um, experience. So in order to do that, um, this is probably the worst thing you could use for that. So I'm just gonna put something on the table here for the, uh, the phone to actually be able to identify instead of like, you know, a blank <laughs> um, nothing. <laughs> so it just basically needs, you know, the camera needs to see something in order to be able to, you know, follow its perspective and position and stuff like that. So I'm gonna just turn off the location layer and this is really tiny right now, so I'm just gonna scale it up. And so now you can see I've got this model right on my table and I'm basically just, you know, I can walk around the model and move my phone around the model and look all around inside of it. Now, you have a lot of the same features here uh, meaning a lot of, you know, you can access your scenes, you can turn your layers on and off. There's also a mode that allows you to uh, jump inside the model. Now this might not work so good because I'm um, I'm trying to do this on a table. This, this would probably work better with a, you know, like a full scale room, you know, tracking a full scale room but there's different modes that you can use. So like if I use the jump mode, I can kind of tap wherever that guy is and it's gonna move me to that spot and I can, you know, look around the model, you know, just by moving my phone all around. So this is a, this is a pretty, cool, pretty cool feature and this, this feature comes with uh, SketchUp Shop and SketchUp Pro. Not the SketchUp Pro Classic, but the SketchUp Pro subscription. Um, so you have to have the SketchUp Pro subscription license in order to get access to the AR features. Other than that, everything else uh, that I went over is available in the free version of that app. So you can just go to the App Store and download that right now and check it out. All right, so that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. And make sure you like and subscribe if you wanna get more of my SketchUp videos. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.